What's up guys? Today I am at Right Away Bikes and today I'm about to do something that I've been waiting to do for like the longest time. I've been riding my Maxxis tires and everything and it's just been horrible because don't one thing that kind of stinks about YouTube and doing videos and stuff like that is the fact that like I can't change any of my stuff or open any of my stuff until I make a video about it <laughs> so I've been waiting for literally two months now to put on my new tires just so I can make you guys a video I hope you guys know the sacrifice <laughs> or feel the sacrifice or feel the love or, or whatever but one of the cool things today about today is that I'm at right away bikes I have been looking for a bike shop who is like knows the, their stuff knows their knowledge you know I've worked at other bike shops and stuff like that but I just I don't know, I get a good feeling about right away bikes they just really really know mountain biking and they specialize in mountain biking it feels like when I come here like if you look at the gear like over here like they like they have like legit gear they have like osprey backpacks here like no one has that if you come over here to all their like helmets and stuff they're all like legit helmets and like legit gear they have 510 shoes like not every bike shop has like 510 shoes you go to all these you know bike shops and they have all these weird shoes that no one's ever gonna really wear but today we're gonna be putting on my maxis tires and we're gonna be unboxing those right now New tire day! Alright guys, so I'm doing something a little bit different. I've never used this tire before. I want something with grip, but I still want something fast rolling. The first tire that I used was the Maxxis Minion SS, which like had like no tread in the middle and just some knobs on the side, and I really liked it. It was really fast. I really felt the uptick in my speed and everything like that. For here, I need a little bit more grippiness. I'm throwing rocks and spinning my wheels. So then I went to the Maxxis Ardent on my bike that I have currently right now, which was better, but I still, I just didn't do it. I still felt like I needed a little bit more, but something still fast rolling. So right now I'm trying the aggressor today. I feel like this is going to be that perfect sweet spot that I've been looking for. I have been using the Maxxis DHF in the front for the longest time and I really, really like it. On the corners, it grips. I very rarely ever use my front grip, but when you're going down steep stuff and you need to like use that front tire to stop, you know, and to kind of just put a little bit of slow down on that stuff, this grips really well for me in my opinion and digs in really good. So I'm really happy with the DHF, but everyone's happy with the DHF. It's like the most sold tire of like all time. I don't think that there's any other tire that's as popular as the Maxxis Minion DHF. So if you guys are wondering about that, then this is like, this is the tire basically right now. There's definitely competitors like the Maxxis Asagai just came out and a lot of people are going to the Asagai, but I don't know how legit it really is. I've heard some ups and I've heard some downs about it and all that stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe we'll do a review on the Asa guy at some point when you guys, when the channel gets bigger and I get make more money or something. I, like I said, I'm at Right Away Bikes. I'm here with Steve and Steve's gonna be giving us some cool tips. Come on in the frame, man, come on in the frame. This is Steve. How you doing? So today we're just gonna be putting on the tires and he's gonna be getting them off for me. We're gonna give you guys some good handy tips and we're gonna learn a lot about tires in and of themselves. Alright guys, so one of the things that he's going to be talking about today, because he, he looked at my tire and he was like, oh my gosh. If you, by looking at my tire, like how, how old do you think it is, the front one? The, the, front, one, the front one has, uh, has a lot of wear. Uh, it's months, 
months old, possibly into the year old. But what I noticed is there's a lot of seeping of the sealant that's in the tire. These are tubeless tires. Once we start to see that, we usually have a tendency to, to really start to look at the tire. And uh, after doing that, i have noticed that uh, a lot of the side knobs are, are cut and uh, worn down. The center knobs are, are pretty worn also. So if you had to guess, how old do you think my tire is? Oh, this tire's, it's, it's probably, six to eight months old <laughs> all right well it's actually two years old <laughs> oh awesome <laughs> i've had this thing for literally two years i've just been sucking the life out of it um because it's the front tire too the front tire generally doesn't wear as quickly correct you know? yeah. so um and i think i have the dual compound or something like that the one that lasts longer so yeah but anyway i'm tired of it <laughs> it's time for new tires do you think it's done do you think it i'm is it is so done it's trash i wouldn't even keep it around for a spare <laughs> nope do you no. honestly think because of how bad it is i'm gonna be able to tell a difference like oh that? yeah within a couple <laughs> rides you'll you'll notice some some really great cornering and handling and braking <laughs> oh my gosh i can't wait i've been doing horribly in that department and this is why i said my tires weeping like literally yeah, crying it's, it's crying so <laughs> when when tires start to really wear when they sh really start to show wear the edges of the knobs will start to to peel back a little bit the centers will start to wear and they'll get a a real uh, angle to them and then you'll start to see this weeping and once that weeping starts uh it usually means that you really need to, to clean the old sealant out and uh, replace the sealant due to there's there's nothing inside the the sealant itself to to coagulate the the fluid of the sealant so why does it weep why does it do that what's going on the it weeps because the the actual coagulant the, i'm just going to show you the orange seal um it's real popular here in texas it, it works real well the sealant itself is very thin and you can see little pieces of gray matter in there that's the actual coagulant itself so the solution is what carries the coagulant around and it spins around but the little pieces are what helps it seal the big holes and once those little pieces start to go away the fluid itself starts to pass through the tire much quicker when they say you can start adding sealant you really want to clean the old sealant out and start with fresh sealant usually every every two or three times that you got to replace the sealant so those little like things that are in the sealant like where where do they all go i mean do they disintegrate do they evaporate no or? every time you get a puncture some of them some of them start to come out the hole and they fill the hole so people refer to as, as my sealant disappearing it doesn't disappear and it doesn't uh, seep out anywhere. It actually, that's what the sealant is made to do is spray some sealant out as it seals the puncture. So do you ride Maxxis? What do you ride? I do ride Maxxis. I have a DHR, DHF, 2.5 in the front, 2.4 in the back with Kush Core. What would you say like the most popular tire is today? It's, it's definitely a Maxxis tires. Hands down, it's, they're just a, a, a great all around tire. They have great customer service. The tires last a long time. They're just, they just work really well in all conditions. What do you think of the new Asagai? Cause the Asagai is supposed to be like the new, like it's like it's the competitor of the DHF. What are your thoughts on that? I think that it's, um, once the new tire, the new Asagai is released, not in the, in the heavier DH casing, I think that tire is going to probably be a little bit uh, more popular than, than the actual DHF that's out now. You always have to try to test tires out to see what works best for you. Uh, sometimes what I like and the air pressures that I like are not what pressures that somebody else would like or, or would be uh, comfortable running also. What would you say that the Maxxis DHF and the um, Aggressor is, you know, is that like an, you think that it's good for Enduro? I think that's, that's, that's going to be a, a, a great combination for you. It's going to be a very grippy front with a very mid grip to fast rear tire. It's going to work really well here in, in Texas soil. We have a lot of uh, small rock, big rock, and a lot of silty dust. So I think that tire is really gonna, it, it's gonna hook up well for you for sure. All right guys, so good info as always. So we're gonna get this thing on the bike and let's get going. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna start off by removing the rear wheel. Uh, for some reason, uh, everybody has a tendency to kind of get scared of the, the rear cassette and the chain and the derailleur, just the way everything is 
laid out in the back, but it's actually pretty simple. The easiest thing to do is to start all the way at the smallest cog in the back. That's gonna give you the least amount of tension. Uh, this is a SRAM product, so we wanna tip the derailleur forward and hit the little brake. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the other side. Some bikes have a quick release. This has a, a, a bolt-on rear wheel. And we're just gonna take that off, unscrew it all the way. We're gonna remove the wheel. We wanna put that rear axle in some place that it's not gonna collect a bunch of uh, debris on the threads. We don't wanna fill the threads up and then go to put them in, back in your rear dropout. Most of them are aluminum. Uh, they can cause some damage to the threads and, and make it kind of really have a lot of stiction. We're gonna put this back together. We're gonna slide this brake card in. Uh, that way if you got a buddy that pulls your brake lever, it's not gonna drive your brake pads together and make it difficult to reinstall your rear wheel. All right, go ahead. Good All right, so uh, this tire here, once we got it off, notice that there's literally zero sealant in it. Uh, that may be one reason why we're getting so much weepage or no sealing whatsoever. The next thing what we're gonna look for after we get that tire off of is we're gonna look at the rim strip. And uh, the easiest thing to do is just grab a, grab a rag. It doesn't have to be clean or dirty or whatever. And we're gonna, we're gonna kind of wipe that bead down before it starts to harden up. Stands and orange seal, uh, both those products, they start to get sticky after they've been exposed to air for a little bit. So we're gonna just work all around cleaning the rim looking for indentations. These nipple holes here will start to sink away that tape. Also with rims, we're looking for any dents or any uh, problems with the rim itself. I'll make sure there's no cracks in it. You know, it's the best time to do it because it's the only time you can do it. Once the tire's on it, it's kind of hidden. All right guys, so a very first has happened to me. I've never had to replace tape on my tire before, but this is what it looks like. So y'all know too. So sometimes uh, the tape gets compromised it could be from taking the tire off or it could be from uh, going a little too low at air pressure and grabbing the tape and into a turn, burping a tire sometimes rips the tape. But it, it does happen so you always have to be prepared when you're changing tires to change your tape out too if needed. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the tape off. It should be pretty easy as long as you don't rush it. It usually comes right off. Yeah, I'm doing it in a, in a wheel stand here but you can do this at home relatively easy. Sometimes it'll, wherever there's a compromise, you can see it's split there. What we'll do, we got that all the way around and now we're ready to put a tire on. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna put the tire on. Uh, a lot of people like to line the Maxxis up in the, in the middle or between the X's, whatever your preference is. We're gonna start right over the top of the valve and we're gonna put one of the beads on right over there so it holds it on. And then we're just gonna slide the, the tire right around the outside of the rim here. Make it real easy. This shouldn't, it shouldn't be so hard that you can't do it with a small tire lever, a little, a very soft tire lever. If it is, your, your bead probably isn't all the way around. We're gonna take the, the tire lever, it has a little hook on it, and we're gonna place it on the rim, and we're just gonna, we're gonna hop the, hop the tire right up and around, and we're gonna work our way right around here. Being careful of not to scar the, uh, the rim tape itself. Okay guys, so I have never not used stand sealant. I've always used stand sealant. Everyone tells me like, dude, stands is where's that? Stand, 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 stand. But he is insisting on doing orange sealant, so I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna do something new. I'm gonna go out of my comfort zone and I'm gonna try something new for 2019 in the mid 2019. It's not yeah. New Year's resolution yet. Hey, we're in Texas. Is it really Texas it brand? It is a Texas brand. What? That is insane. Okay, so I guess I gotta do orange sealant. So let's let's do it, let's put it on. Here we go. All right, so once we get our desired air pressure starting off, I have about 30 PSI in it to, just to start off. Uh, that's kind of high. Uh, we always wanna give it a, a good shake, get that sealant to uh, kind of move around the, the bead, the bead of the, the rim and the tire. And uh, what this is gonna do is just give us the initial seal of uh, the sealant between the bead of the tire and the bead of the rim. All right guys, so I finally have new tires on my bike for like over a year. Like this was a long time overdue. Now I can't wait to get out there and like 
try out these new tires because I've been on these jacked up tires for so long that I can't wait to actually feel the real difference you know that I get from it so let's get out there and ride let's go check it out But first, we need to go thank Steve over here for helping me out. Where is he? He is in the back over here. We're going to wait for him because I don't know if there's some secret, like, top secret stuff back there that you're all not supposed to see. So, Steve, thanks a lot, man. You, dude, your tips were awesome. Like, everything, like, oh my gosh, like, it was good hanging out with you, like, the whole time. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, the whole time Steve was like, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm just chilling, man. It's all good. And I'm like, really? So Steve got to, so if you appreciate some of the footage that's on here, Steve made it happen. He was patient with me, did stuff over and all that stuff. So, dude, thank you so much. Here, oh, you're Keep welcome. My hand in left the hands, camera. here we go. Yeah, left hands, you left hands unite. What's one of the best stories that you have in regards to mountain biking? Is oh, it a trip? It, one of the crazinesses of, of cycling. Uh, I'm from upstate New York. That's uh, the birthplace of uh, no tubes. And uh, we were in a place called Shindagan Hollow. Uh, I was riding with a bunch of friends and uh, this really kind of eccentric, wacky, cool guy shows up in the middle of this big forest and says, hey, my name is Stan and uh, I'm developing a, a no-tube system for bicycles and breaks out this big ice pick and starts to stab his tire right in front of us and we were kind of uh, in shock and uh, in awe about the stuff actually worked and uh, everybody wanted that and, and that was probably almost 30 years ago that that, that that happened. So you're telling me that like he didn't eat, Stan wasn't even Stan, there was no such thing as like no tubes yet. Not like, a single thing. There's just this crazy guy and his buddy out riding around showing other cyclists, other mountain bikers that he's making this tubeless system. Um, we all thought he was pretty crazy but the stuff actually worked really well uh, and I'm not talking he just didn't stab the tire once. He stabbed it like multiple times and <laughs> sealant was spraying everywhere and it, it worked really well and we were like wow man we need that, that, that that's going to be something that's going to be you know uh, really cool in the in the future so you just witnessed mountain bike history like before your eyes before that is our insane. eyes yeah <laughs> all right that is awesome great story so when I said like a story, I didn't realize it was gonna be like an awesome epic story. So that was amazing. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we're gonna get on the trail and we will see you soon. And thank right, you, Steve. And uh, where, where can they find you guys? You got, you know, what's the store called and everything? Here, right away, I work at Right Away Bicycles in San Antonio, Texas. We have uh, three locations in Texas. Um, we can pretty much help you with, uh, with any problem. Well, we have a really great staff here 